Hey guys, Woodruff here. So this is a part of my long lecture over EKG. Um, we're going to now get into the rhythms that we need to know and start talking about what is the reasons for dysrhythmias in the first place and um, what is normal. And so um, if I didn't lose you in the first part where you're like, oh my God, this is going to be so hard. It's going to get easier. Once we actually start looking at the rhythms, what they look like, it makes a lot more sense. It's just, you know, talking about the little pieces is always hard and there's a lot of, um, you know, needless stuff in it. So needless to, oh, needless, needless stuff and needless to say. Um, this is a list of the rhythms you're going to need to know or be able to identify um, this semester. You're going to need to know others in later semesters, and some of these could be tested on later semesters. We focus on what's normal. We focus on um, AFib and A-flutter, SVT. We focus on your ventricular rhythms like VTAC, VFib, and asystole. Um, we do talk about PVCs or PACs, um, and you have to be able to identify patients rhythms. You don't have to know how to um, like identify problems in paced rhythms, but you need to know, hey, that's a paced rhythm. Um, we'll talk about each of these. So I'm going to break down this um, uh, I'm going to break down this series of PowerPoints into smaller pieces. Now, normally I, um, you know, do a bunch of rhythms at the same time, um, but I think I'm going to break them down, you know, Oh, excuse my burps. Um, one by one. Um, and I do realize I burp a lot um, or, you know, we could be fancy and call it dyspepsia. Um, I have a lot of dyspepsia in these. And um, yeah, I apologize for that if that offends you. Um, but um, yeah, that's all I can say is I apologize. But, uh, you know, sometimes life is hard. Um, needless to say, I'm going to break these down one by one and, um, you know, hopefully that will help to shed some light and separate it a little bit in your brain for you. I'm going to start by going through all the rhythms and there's some case studies and stuff throughout these. Um, and then after we will, um, talk about how do you interpret or like, how do you look at the rhythm? And it's not an abstract painting. Um, I used to teach where we talk through how to look at the rhythm and then I would talk about the rhythms, but I think it's helpful to learn the rhythms first. Like what are, what is a rhythm supposed to look like? What are the parts? And then go from there. Um, but you can always um, comment and let me know if I am full of crap, which I am, but hopefully not with this. <laughs> so um, let's talk about some common re reasons for dysrhythmia. So before I do that, remember everything comes down with dysrhythmia is to that it's all about um, perfusion, oxygenation. It can cause low cardiac output. It can cause oxygenation issues. It can stop me from getting perfusion to my organs, my tissues, et cetera. Um, so what could cause me to go into some of these dysrhythmias? Uh, so things like heart disease uh, could cause um, dysrhythmia. So that would be things like heart failure, heart failure, and um, certain dysrhythmias are commonly connected. Heart disease like heart attacks or coronary artery disease, angina, um, hypertension, things like that could all eventually lead to problems in the heart and uh, problems with the heart's electrical system. Um, acid base imbalances can lead to dysrhythmias. Um, any dr uh, drug and alcohol use, especially things um, you know, like cocaine and stuff like that are real hard on the heart. Um, caffeine is a big one. So, you know, um, when we talk about SVT, we'll talk about one of the biggest risk factors is being a nursing student who drinks too many Celsiuses. Um, or if you know, Mr. Andrews, he is very high risk for dysrhythmias because he drinks too much caffeine. Uh, medication side effects can lead to dysrhythmias, any sort of electrolyte imbalances. We usually talk about potassium and magnesium are the two electrolytes that are most common uh, related, or at least I would say those are the ones that we check to see um, that might have caused an electrolyte imbalance. Um, lack of oxygen is a big one. Um, so a lot of times, um, you know, we talk later when you get into complex about patients on ventilators and suctioning them. And if you suction a patient and don't hyper oxygenate them, you'll actually see they'll start getting PVCs and other things. The heart's getting less oxygen. So it's like, Oh, uh, I don't like this. You know, anytime the heart is you know, a little stressed out or it's like, Oh, where's my oxygen? You know, it starts to, um, uh, what do you call them? Have some irregularities. Um, and then infection, uh, anything inflammatory can definitely lead to, um, issues with uh, dysrhythmias. So in other words, everything can lead to dysrhythmias, <laughs> but these are some of the big things. So we're going to start with what normal looks like. And all I'm going to cover in this video is just normal sinus rhythm so that you can kind of get what is normal. So like I said, when I first, um, we'll, we'll talk about sinus bradycardia and tachycardia in other videos. Like I said, when I first look at a rhythm, I always first make sure, does it have all the parts? So I look like, okay, so like in this rhythm, there is a P wave, 
there is, um, and I'm, I'm going to the next one just because I don't have room with this pen, but you can see that there's one for each. There's a QRS and there's a T wave. Um, so they have all the three components I need, and you can see they have them for each beat. So there's a P wave, QRS, T wave, P wave, QRS, T wave, P wave, QRS, T wave. So they have all the parts. Um, and if, if you're finally saying, oh, so this is why she was going through all that crap in the beginning. This is why. Um, so other thing that makes this normal in a sinus rhythm is going to be that the rate is going to be 60 to 100. Um, and then that it's, it has a regular R to R. And so again, here, this is another one of those. So that's why she went through all that. So remember R to R is the space in between the pointy things. So it's regular. And even though my drawing isn't regular, um, this space is regular. And so the space between these, um, is all the same. Um, and so the big things you want to look at here is what makes it normal is I have all of the pieces. I have the P wave, the QRS and the T wave. They're all doing what they're supposed to do. The P wave is upright. Um, the QRS is skinny. Um, and I have a T wave that is upright, normal, et cetera. So, um, sinus rhythm, um, if you want to, like, as we're talking about these first through the few, there's sinus, normal sinus rhythm, there's sinus bradycardia and sinus tachycardia. Um, all of these are called sinus because it means they start from that node that's at the top of your heart. And I know they start, um, start from there because they have all of the parts and they, uh, what do you call it? The parts are appearing normal. Um, when the top of my heart, um, cause there's two nodes that could possibly send signals to tell my heart to, you know, um, squeeze, et cetera. I, um, I know that it's my sinus node doing it, um, when it appears like this, I'm not going to go deep into the path though, of how I, um, of, of why that is. You talk about um, when you get to complex about when your sinus node isn't working and your AV node takes over, you get to learn about junctional rhythms, but that's for a later time. But just know if it's sinus, we always want patients back in sinus. Sinus is what that means is, is that the main pacemaker in my heart is doing its job. And the main pacemaker in my heart has a, a rate of 60 to 100 um, and um, is um, beating the way that it is supposed to. It's got all of its components. Um, it has regular intervals and all that stuff. But really, like I said, what you all you need to do if you were looking at this strip is just ask yourself, okay, there's a, a P wave a Q, um, that's upright, a QRS that's skinny and a T wave, same distance in between each beat. It's in a rate of 60 to 100. I have normal sinus rhythm. And um, this is normal. So there's nothing that you need to do to treat this rhythm. Um, this patient should not have symptoms or have any problems. Uh, of course, we always correlate and check on everything. So I'm saying never say never. Um, but if a person's in a normal rhythm, um, there's not something emergent or needing uh, needing to be done at this time. So that is normal. The next, um, this is like, I should say this is the completely normal rhythm. Um, the next one we're going to go over is sinus bradycardia when things get a little slow. So um, we'll go to that one next. See you there.